Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of this series where we are going to talk about RabbitMQ in C Sharp. I don't know whether you already know about RabbitMQ and the concept of messaging, but I mean, if you do not know anything about messaging and RabbitMQ, this is the perfect place. If you know a thing or two about C Sharp and you want to learn more, so this is going to help you a lot. So in this series, uh, which has like six to seven episodes, we are going to learn about the different concepts of RabbitMQ at a theoretical level, and then we're going to see how to implement those inside of Visual Studio. So if you take a look here, I've got my notes. I've got my RabbitMQ running on my local machine. By the way, I am running it as a Docker container. So uh, of course, you can install RabbitMQ on your machine. Uh, but it is also possible to run it as a Docker container, which is something that I have decided to do. Uh, I, I hope you already know about you know Docker. So this course is not about Docker. I'm assuming that you already know, you know, you already know a bit about Docker. Anyways, uh, and here on my other you know display, I've got Visual Studio. I've got two applications for now instead of a solution called consumer app, producer app. So the basic idea is that the producer app is going to publish some messages to RabbitMQ and the consumer app is going to consume them, right? So uh, we're going to discover different, different, you know, patterns, different uh, ways that these two applications can communicate through messaging. So there are different, you know, things you need to, you need to learn and we're going to cover them all little by little. And if you take a look here, uh, I am running, you know, RabbitMQ on my local machine as a Docker container. And this is why you are seeing, you know, the home page of RabbitMQ here on, you know, this browser tab. So uh, yeah, I've got my browser, I've got my notes, I've got the solution. There are no, you know, code here. There is no code here. And I am on branch number one because there are going to be, you know, there's going to be more than one branch. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's get started. Let's, uh, you know, talk a little bit about RabbitMQ and see what we are going to implement in this video. So, yeah, this first uh, episode is going to talk about the basics of RabbitMQ, right? And we're going to see the examples. And uh, um, I don't want to only talk about the concepts. I also want to uh, show you how you can implement those concepts. So let's talk about RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is a message broker. Right, so we're gonna see what a message broker is. So it's like a central hub, it's a central place uh, where you can, you know, send some messages, and also uh, there are other applications that can receive messages from from that hub, right? So basically, the applications that that you know produce messages or send messages to the hub, to this RabbitMQ, to this message broker, are called producers, and the ones that consume messages are called are called the consumers. You might hear other, you know, uh, let's say vocabularies like, I don't know, publisher, subscriber, and so on. We're going to cover those as well. So this decoupling of our applications, of course, helps us to, you know, have uh, a more maintainable architecture. The components of our architecture will be able to communicate with one another, but at the same time, they're all, they're all loosely coupled. There is no coupling between them the communication between the different components is going to happen through the message broker which of course helps with uh, having a maintainable and loosely coupled architecture uh, let's talk about an analogy to better understand the concept think about a post office so when you send a letter to your friend's address uh, you for example put that letter inside a post box right and you trust that the post office which is the message broker or rabbit and queue in this context to deliver that letter to the recipient, to your friend's address. And you do not care, you know, how the letter gets there. You do not care what routes, what, what streets uh, the letter is going to travel through. All you care about is that the letter arrives at the destination in a timely manner, uh, safe, right? And the user, uh, the friend or the recipient actually receives, you know, the, the letter. So basically, the application or the person, the entity that sends that letter in that analogy is the uh, producer. You are the producer because you are producing a message. You are sending a letter. Your friend or the application that is going to receive that letter is the consumer, right? The queue 
where uh, I mean that that letter is going to get stored and managed is the post box, not the post office. So this is I think very important to remember when we are talking about message broker, like for example, uh, RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is the message broker, is the post office, post office. But but there are numerous post boxes inside of that post office. So those post boxes are the queues, are where the messages are going to get stored until a consumer is ready to fetch them and consume them. And RabbitMQ, of course, as acts as the post office, the, rap, the, the message broker, right? So it accepts messages, it stores the messages, and forwards them to the consumer. Uh, and in this analogy, again, the only difference is that, you know, RabbitMQ, of course, uh, deals with binary data, post office uh, deals with letters. Uh, so this is like, now an intro to RabbitMQ. Now, what we are going to do, as I told you, of course, you can install RabbitMQ on your local machine. The default port is this, right? 5672, 5672. I have decided to run it as a Docker container. And then you need to have .NET Core SDK installed, which I am assuming you already have because you know you are a .NET developer. And then what you also need to do is to install the rabbitmq.net client library. In this uh, case, for example, a specific version. Doesn't matter really. I'm going to show you that. And then you can use uh, these CLI commands to create your producer and your consumer, right? So basically, we are creating two applications and we are installing this rabbitmq client in both of them, in both of these applications. So if you check out this you will see that I have RabbitMQ here and here, right? And the version is 7.1.2. Now, basically, as I told you, we're going to write two simple applications here. So uh, the producer and the consumer, right? And then we are going to talk about uh, what they are doing, uh, and then of course we're going to we're going to run them. So let's first write the code for the uh, for the uh, producer application. So the producer application is of course responsible for communicating with RabbitMQ and then publishing a message to RabbitMQ, publishing a message to a queue where that message will stay and then a consumer is going to take, fetch, fetch that message and consume it. So let's, let's write the code. So we are going to create a connection factory. The host name is going to be localhost because RabbitMQ is running on our local host. Then we're going to create a connection and a channel. And a channel, we're going to talk about channels. They're like lightweight connections. Then we're going to create the queue so we can configure the queue, the name of the queue, whether it is durable, exclusive, auto delete, which we're going to talk about. Then we create our message, a string, and then we convert it to an array of bytes. And then we use basic publish async to you know publish that message and then we write to the console that we have published a message and of course the consumer can now you know uh, fetch that message from the uh, from the uh, RabbitMQ you know queue the queue is this hello right so there are uh, uh, you know several options that you can configure when you are creating uh, the queue or where when when you are publishing a message uh, and I am going to talk about these in more detail but uh, just I mean by taking a look at it you can see that whenever you're publishing you can specify the exchange which is something that we are going to you know talk about in future episodes we are you know uh, setting the body which is this little guy and then you can set the routing key which is uh, something that will be uh, talked about again in future episodes we're going to talk about a durable queue, whether a uh, queue is exclusive, auto delete, and so on in the upcoming episode as well. So basically, in this case, we are, you know, uh, taking the uh, simplest example. And if you take a look here at RabbitMQ, you will see that I already have this queue, right? So the queue hello is already here inside of RabbitMQ, and there are no messages here, right? So if there was a message here, you would see, uh, you know, number one here, for example. Total, it is zero right now. I can, I can even go ahead and delete this queue altogether. So you don't see the queue here anymore, right? Now, the next step, of course, for us is to 
start writing the code for the uh, you know uh, consumer application so now that the queue is going to get published to the uh, the message is going to get published to the queue we need the consumer to be able to fetch that message and display it on the screen for example so basically again we are going to create our connection factory with our local host as our host name like the producer we're going to create the connection as well as the channel and then we are going to declare our queue the name is hello it is not durable not exclusive auto delete is false and of course the arguments is going to be null and then we are printing that we are waiting for a message to arrive then we need to create our consumer using this type async eventing basic consumer we're going to handle receive the sync which is an event that you can subscribe to whenever a message arrives you're going to get the message from you know your event args the body convert it to a string and finally print it on the console and return task that completed and then you're going to call basic consume async on your channel with some you know configuration like for example the name of the queue auto act is true and then the consumer is going to be the consumer so important points you create your consumer with this type and then you set the consumer on the basic consume async coming from your channel which you declared here so these three types right connection factory connection and then channel uh, this is exactly what we also did in the you know producer application and of course the event that we are handling here and the body of our event args right the event args is of type basic deliver event args and of course when you get your body you need to again convert it to a string now what i want to do is to i mean i have created different command prompts as you can see here i have three instances of my command prompts i'm going to open this one and then i'm going to go to the producer uh, i am already inside a producer now i want to run this .NET run I'm going to run the producer app. You remember that we, you know, deleted this, this hello queue. So now it says hello world from the producer was sent to the queue. Now on my, you know, browser, I'm going to refresh this and you see that hello is now available. This is the name of the queue. I'm going to go to this, you know, queue and you will see that total is one. So there is one queue, one message on this queue right now, right? So if I come here and if I go to this section which says get messages, it shows me the payload of the message, which is hello world. As you can see, it says hello world from the producer. Now we need to run the consumer to be able to fetch that single message from the queue and print it on our machine. So I'm inside the consumer app folder, as you can see, and then I am going to say that not run. So the application ran successfully. First, it printed this line of code, right? Waiting for messages on the queue. And then it says, press any key to exit, receive the message, hello world from the producer. So basically the hello world from the producer, which we saw here, right? Here has been fetched by the consumer and was printed, right? Was printed here. Now, if I come here, and you know refresh this you will see that the total is now zero so basically what we successfully did was that we had the producer app publish a message on the queue and then the consumer you know uh, fetched that single message uh, and this is the most basic the simplest you know uh, approach of communicating uh, you know, uh, of, of a communication between the consumer and the producer using RabbitMQ. And then this is something that we did. Yeah, we, we you know, ran the consumer app. We kind of ran the, uh, you know, a producer app and we saw the result. And that was it. Uh, stay tuned because in the, in the next video, in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to uh you know uh implement the publisher subscribe pattern so publisher subscribe means that one entity like one producer app 
publishes an event, right? Or publishes a message, and then there are multiple subscribers, multiple consumers interested in that message that are gonna each, you know, uh, fetch that message and consume it. So this is also very important in, for example, microservices architecture. This is something that we're gonna talk about in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If that's the case, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Don't forget you can get the code for each, uh, you know, video uh, using the link that I have put in the comment section. Till later, bye bye.